Welcome everyone, you're listening to and watching Calling the Audible, the flagship show of the FPF Podcast Network. I am Pease Delores, I am joined in studio by, uh, or joined with, joined by, joined with, joined, uh, joined with... We sound like uh, twins. GM Calethris. Uh Of course, you can follow GM at GMCall44, you can follow me at Pease FPF. Uh, remember that you can tweet the show live by tweeting us at... Eagle FPF, and he will transmit your messages uh, just like Mo transmits when he's not careful. Uh, you can you can follow him uh, at MoCon19, and uh, he is, of course, our producer, the slow con himself. Uh, we are in our new home at Sportira in the cage, in Sportira cage. Of course, if you're looking for a new uh, jersey, they are the official supplier of jerseys to Flag Plus Football. Welcome, GM. How have you been? I've been pretty good, actually. I learned that three-on-three and four-on-four soccer is a sport. It's really cool. I, I don't even know if spot soccer is a sport, to be fair. Yeah, that's, that's true, but uh, of possibly a sport, then there yes. exists three-on-three and four-on-four. I, I would three say more so. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, I want to remind our listeners and, and, and viewers, of course, uh, if you're watching, this is the seventh season of Calling the Audible, uh, the original podcast that, of course, is perennially the highest rated podcast, as well as the podcast with the smartest audience. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for listening. Humble break. So muted. That's uh, awesome right there. Remember when we started this up in my basement and we had a rock band microphone? This is a, a slight upgrade. Yeah. Slight upgrade, Eagle. Absolutely. Our first season was interesting. Uh, rock band mic was uh, our only piece of equipment. Uh, we've since uh, grown by leaps and bounds. Yeah. So you can actually see all the equipment. I, th I think there's like a photo the of me that exists sprawled out on the couch, just like recording while yeah, very looking very risque. And too close to me. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. But uh, we've come full circle and here we are. I don't know if it's a full circle or half circle either way. Terry, of course, dropping some important knowledge uh, on some of the upcoming games. Um, so, GM, just to, to because everyone's show might everyone's uh, first listen might be their first listen ever to the podcast. Uh, our first one would be someone's first show uh, ever. Um, you won two championships. Uh, you currently play for Top South. Top South in Division C. In Division C and. A uh, team that we will discuss a little bit later. Uh, formerly, formerly, formerly teamless. Correct the amount of formerly is used. Thank you. Uh, absolutely. FFFT, as I will, will start to write in my article, uh, because just writing your team name just destroys my autocorrect. Um, and, but before we get into Copy your paste team, is your friend. Just copy uh, one formerly. Um, I will, uh, uh, we will talk about your team, of course, later in the show. But I do want to talk about some of the games that happened this week. Uh, PMS... Part of my swag beat the hooligans 31-25. Uh, Chris Olsen in his return throws four touchdowns, no interceptions. He looked good, but it wasn't quite enough. Uh, what what will he need for the to to give the hooligans a shot moving forward? Jeff Brown. I, I think it's it's very apparent that the emotional leader of this team, the player with the most FPF experience, the most higher division experience, was missing from this game. And I think having that going forward, just having that calming voice in the huddle, having a playmaker you know you can throw the ball to, having someone who can call the defense effectively will be a good way for this team to move forward and really progress. A couple of seasons ago in Division D, Chris Olsen had a great season, uh, throwing 35 touchdowns of five interceptions regressed in his next season do you think which Chris Olsen do you think we'll see this season I think that this division D and when he first started playing are of similar talent levels and depth um, he doesn't have higher end talent like Michael Mullerich but um, has good supporting cast that can lead him through it, it all depends on how active he's been in, in the offseason since venturing away from FPF for uh, part of my swag, pa Patrick P. Lutz seems to be the number one guy. Uh, do you think he's a true number one receiver? We saw in this game he had five catches, 77 yards, and two touchdowns. Do you think he can be the number one receiver, or, do they, or, or are they lacking explosiveness? With, without a doubt. Having seen them play preseason, seeing the dynamic that he has with Brad Evans, the fact that Brad Evans can just toss the ball up and know Patrick will be there for him to come down with the pass speaks volumes of that. Um, they, wor they work really, they have a dynamic that works really well together. A lot of routes are called that get different receivers open, but they know how to really use Patrick's, um, Patrick's velocity, his speed, um, his route running, and his football IQ to their advantage. So I think he's definitely poised to be one of the number one receivers on a team. Part of my swag uh, has an experienced quarterback in Brad Evans. Um, they have a lot of talent overall, good defense. Patrick Pilot, who we just finished talking yeah. about. 
my thought has been that they've lacked an X factor. And I thought that even last season with Jonathan Grizzly on the team, uh, now I think more so that there's, there's still missing a, a key piece going on the line. Do you think that's the case or do you think I'm completely off? I, well, I, I know that you always want to have a number two who compliments your number one. On this team, I think it's Olivier Dussault. Um, Brad has great faith in him. He's got great speed, great hands, fantastic defensive awareness as well. If you watch him run routes, his catches are always full extension. It doesn't matter. You try and overthrow him. It's not possible. Uh, mm -hmm. He's not lanky, but will still come down with the ball at a moment's notice and is really deceiving when you look at him. Um, in another game we'll talk about, uh, a, a result that made me really happy and it would bring me to full extension, uh, so to speak. The Tyrants <laughs> beat the DG Goods 20-6. Uh, the Tyrants are one of the teams that I've talked about for seasons that I wanted them to return to, to previous days when they, when they were a front runner in, in the lower divisions. Uh, that's a good start. Uh, we see George and Nick Tarras uh, throwing three touchdowns and one interception. Uh, I've always liked them with... Uh, with uh, Chris Kaliotsakis at quarterback, or John, John Kaliotsakis at quarterback. Uh, do you feel that this is the best use of the Tyrants personnel uh, seeing this result, or do you feel this is sort of a one-off game? I'm not really certain. We were always of the opinion that the Tyrants' talent levels seemed to stagnate and the league sort of evolved around them, and it seems like now they're starting to adapt as well. What I like about Nick Tarras compared to Kaliotsakis, Kaliotsakis... Did, we did perceive as being the better quarterback, but George always comes in with a certain confidence and a certain leadership that he br he drives the team forward. Whereas it always seems like John Kaliotsakis, um, John Kaliotsakis comes in only as a last resort and seems to be consistently put behind the eight ball. And you even see they have their shoulders slumped. They know that when when Kaliotsakis is in instead of Nick Taras, they're already losing and things need to be turned around. So. Oh. Go ahead, yeah. So long as, as Nick Tarras is playing well, considering they came out of the gates really well against DG Goons, who um, I guess are in a sophomore slump, it's good news for, for the Tyrants. I agree, I agree. Um, although I don't know if it's quite the sophomore year for DG Goons being their third, their third season. I think that makes it their junior slump. Yes. Uh, but we got, a, we got a, uh, a bit of info in from our producer, Slow Khan. Um, he, he mentioned, of course... He mentioned, of course, that uh, the Tyrants last season were really banged up, played with a lot of different players. Um, I actually did a breakdown of sort of their past season uh, glory and past season failings in a preseason article. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, please do so. Uh, of course, the article can be found on our website, www.flagplusfootball.com. And, of course, if you're on our website, you will see that we are sponsored by Sportira, whose cage we are currently rattling and doing our podcast in. Uh, you mentioned DG Goons. Chris Pendenza struggled mightily in week one. Um, he went seven for 24, uh, 123 uh, yards, uh, one touchdown, uh, three interceptions, reversing Nick Tyrus' stats. Uh, what's up with this? I think a lot of this I'm, I'm going to take away from what you're going to bring up as well, but it will use it as a segue and a transition. I think a lot of it did have to do with the relentless physical pressure of Phil Dikovovich rushing him. Um, I'm very happy to see that the Tyrants have really found uh, a rusher that complements their style of play. It's funny because they seem to have a new rusher each Yeah, season. you, you, you know they were once. doing poorly when they had me rushing for them. <laughs> exactly, yeah. um, they, were, they were able to uh, turn things around. Uh, humble brag, I had a decent season with them, but it's not going to even compare to what uh, Phil Tukovic is going to do. Uh, they, they have him, especially with Carl Balafi being missing week one, they have him as an option for center. Um, he's, he's a fantastic rusher, great Definitely receiver as well. Player, very, very versatile so, player. So you can ask me a question, how big is the pickup of Phil Tukovic? Huge, yeah. right? Um, absolutely, I couldn't agree more. I think he's one of these uh, non-household names bound to become one very soon. Um, we got a note in from Slokan. He says the goons. Just go ahead. Well, the guys, uh, speaking to the goons before uh, their first game, that uh, they were bit, well, they got over the bitterness of the loss of Jagger Bombs in winter season, and they feel very confident that they will have a great season this spring and hopefully closing out and potentially winning or going to the finals this spring and on, on, uh, on August 8th later on this year. Absolutely, absolutely. I think uh, good things are to come either way. I, I, think, I, don't, I, I don't think we'll see this kind of result moving forward. I think DG Goons will be just fine. Uh, Derek Fontana is another guy I'd like to mention just because a lot of, guys, a lot of players in the league don't know him, but he's an absolutely awesome receiver. Uh, Jim Collector just points to himself because he is, in fact, the discoverer of Derek Fontana, of his own opinion. Of um, my own opinion, yes. Um, we have uh, Warhawks beating Junkyard Dogs. 33, 35 to 25. In my article, I kind of called out Fred Millette. He answered the bell. Um, he, he, 
he answered the challenge. He, he, yeah, he said he, he put up there five uh, touchdowns, no interceptions. My question is to you, is this a question of Millette finally having the talent around him? Or was it just going up against a team moving up in divisions, not yet finding themselves? I, I think it's kind of this middle ground right now. Millette played quarterback in Division B. Mm -hmm. Admittedly, they, they didn't do well. They did incredibly poorly. But he faced off week in, week out against Division B caliber defenses. When was this, though? This was last spring. Oh, was it? oh yeah, it was last spring. Yes, it was. Of course. Um, with that in mind, considering the receiving core he has with Jgalapam, uh, the great uniforms as per Mokan, he, he really had no excuses. The uniforms, of course, made at Sportira. You, you really have no excuses. You've gone from facing Division B caliber defenses to Division D. You're going to do well. Or and something's seriously wrong. And just so we're all on the same page, this is not the same Warhawks from years past, right? No, yes, correct. This, is, this isn't the, uh, the Warhawks team uh, in past seasons uh, that featured... Yeah, Tim uh, O'Hara, Joel... Tim O'Hara's quarterback. Yeah, uh, yeah Brian the, Martin... The awesome dude with glasses. Brian Martin awesome. is posted on the <laughs> Brian Facebook. Martin, Brian Martin, that's the dude. Horse, the horse grant of FPF. <laughs> uh, jo uh, Joel Watson... Joel Watson's mom, who's famous for getting an OC on the bench. That's awesome. The first, but not the last spectator to get an OC That's on the true. bench. Definitely not last. Unfortunately, not last. <laughs> um, definitely, but still, I think this is one of the best receiving cores in the division. So if Millet can play at a Division B caliber, uh, which we hadn't seen from him, but if he can, if he can play above his division. If he can take what he learned. Absolutely. Then, then, then this was definitely a front runner in this division. Uh, for Junkyard Dogs, uh, I think... I think that uh, Jason Rossi found himself a new BFF. Shane Jackson, seven catches, half of what he caught all of last season. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that he is the, the, the main target or was just, just coverage dictating uh, the flow of the offense? I think it is. He may have a new, uh, a new BFF, as you say, a, a target like that. Having Kokolakis, um, being able to spread the ball between those two players is huge. You know that Jason Rossi likes to have a player that he just likes to send deep and throw up a prayer to every time and letting the, his receiver do the work. It seems that he's getting that dynamic with Jackson right now. It's fantastic for the both of them because it fits the team's dynamic as well. When that's not available, they can run uh, that, that halfback play to Julien Lefebvre, Bob as they call him. No I don't get it either. Yeah, no one does. Um, it's, it's more of the same with them, and I think it's going to work in this division. Uh, of course, Slow Khan is uh, mentioning to us that uh, James Soriani was coaching him up on the sidelines. Well, he's coached them in years past. So he's yeah. always been a, a He's mentor. also played with them. Yes, Absolutely. that's right. So he's always helped them out in some sort And anytime you get a, a quarterback, uh, a guy who's played quarterback at a, at a high level like James Soriani, whether or not you like him, like, for example, I think he's completely overrated. But he definitely can help in, the, in Division D. Um, and definitely, uh, I think Jason Rossi can take a lot from that. Um, should Junkyard Dogs be worried after this uh, week one loss? Not at all. I think this is such a close division right now. There's a lot of parity. We don't see that sort of upper echelon and lower echelon of teams. We haven't even come close to discussing that right now because we all agree there were very few blowouts throughout uh, the week one. Uh, those that were were either new teams or teams without a full roster. So we're of the opinion right now that with the cap system in place, with seeing the difference between, say, that there is no top tier and bottom tier. It's just close games where one team stood out and won over the other. Agreed. Um, so this is the part of the show where we would typically take a break uh, and listen to the wonderful music stylings of Tay Tay Taylor Smith, uh, Taylor Swift. But unfortunately, I got a blank uh, space, baby. As it is, uh, as it is week one, and we're working out the kinks. Uh, we're going to get into the next segment. But before we do, I want to remind everyone. Of course, you're listening to Calling the Audible uh, on our YouTube uh, channel. Of course, it's uh, www.youtube.com backslash flag plus. Of course, if you don't know that, I don't know how you're listening to. Did you just say podcast. backslash? Backslash. You Not did. The, it is 1990 it again. Is 1990 you can even put again. in the HTTP uh, you colon. Can. You probably can. Uh, I am old, GM, and of course. Uh, you can uh, shoot me about how old I am by tweeting me at PZFPF. If you want to tweet the show live, you can tweet uh, our uh, tech technical director, uh, the Eagle at Master Control, at Eagle FPF. If you want to tweet GM just to tell him how lovely his eyebrows or are. Or we could discuss 90s computer references, whether you used AOL or Netscape Communicator. One of us has mail. Um, but, and of course, because we would prefer that you do it on Twitter and not by email, uh, you can do that at GMQuo44. Remember, you can hashtag FPF for all your FPF uh, desires, dreams, hopes, and fears. Um, and you can tweet Mokan, because no one else does, at Mokan19. He is Slowcon, our producer, 
in the cage here at Sportera. Uh, GM, I want to look at some of uh, my preseason ratings that you completely disagreed with for the most part. Uh, I want to look at some of the teams that I, uh, I sort of talked about and maybe put in the wrong categories. Uh, I said, for example, PMS. I said, well, of course, part of They will strike. attract some bears. They will attract bears at least once a month. Um, <laughs> I, just, I just don't see it with this team. Do you think I'm way off base? Do you think, do you think they're better than I gave them credit for? Uh, go ahead. I think this is one of the teams right now, I, I alluded it to it before, where they have a certain team dynamic, they have faith in each other. This is one of the teams that are very chemistry-based that will win games. Mm -hmm. um, similar to, say, Global Gym Purple Cobras, who are still kind of learning that, but they, they all have a core that's played together with, throughout the different dynamics. They're players who are comfortable with each other, know where each other are going to be at a moment's notice. Um, I think that they're going to make a push and really surprise some more, say, athletic or powerhouse teams in the division. Absolutely. Um, I, I, I think, honestly, my thing with them has always been that when it comes to big games, uh, they don't have that number one guy you can rely on, the Steph Curry, uh, who can go and make a you know, sick layup like we just saw in replay. Uh, I'm not watching the game instead of listening to you at all. Uh, but um, they, the, to me, they're missing uh, that, that big play ability. Um, so uh, there just always seems to be s a little piece missing, and I think that's, that's true of them this season as well. Another team that I just don't see doing well after ha struggling in a, in a winter season in a division I thought was weaker than Division D, uh, Hot Boys Hotline. Um, I, put your personal bias aside mm -hmm. and tell me, do you think I am off base when I say I'm, I'm somewhere on the fence right now. I think it's going to take consistency to sway me. Um, they came up with a great play call, uh, using Vadim uh, Chernyak as their center, um, knowing that not a lot of centers in FPF can run routes the way Vadim does, and having him as your go-to receiver on a corner route on the last play of the game is fantastic. But you're saying you wouldn't send me on a corner route? Correct. I would game. never, ever, <laughs> ever send you on a corner <laughs> route with the there. game on the line. Never, absolutely. Um, so having that versatility at the center position is huge. Um, Bryden Streeter is going to smoke a lot of DBs in Division D, especially. And he's going to confuse a lot of quarterbacks. He's, a, he's an incredible defender. He, he just has, for a guy who never played, he has an incredible feel. feel like but th things that, so, so those are things in the positive for me as well. However, poor time clock management. Um, we, we've mentioned Malcolm Archer in, in the past. Malcolm Archer, who was the sack leader last spring, faced off against a brand new QB in Division D and could not touch him. And I think it's testament to see as this team moves up, they stop being a big fish in a little pond and starting to see actual competition. And this is where it's going to differ a little bit to see if they, if they can hold ground. Absolutely. Um, a team that I put in the prove me wrong category because I thought Terry Tam would have trouble adjusting um, to playing in somewhat of a higher division. I put Wolfpack in, the, in, in there. I just I didn't think Terry can just chuck up balls to his tall receivers. Uh, but getting a win in week one. Yeah. So do you think I'm wrong by putting them in that category? I have, I have no idea. He left. So I, th I thought he was going to sit here and listen to us for a little bit, but he left so I can be candid. We He's of the... Um, He's, he's a product of his teammates to a certain extent. Uh, Darren will certainly agree with me because he's looking at me right now. Yeah, da Darren um, Basbaraco walking in. Uh, yeah, exactly. But like having players like Bradley Augustin, Michael Cafe, Yakub Telemach, all Terry has to do is put faith in his, dece in rec his receivers. Receivers? Receivers. That would be awesome. To make the play. Yeah. And I think it'll come down to really challenging him. No, Telemach is not the second QB. On uh, strength throws, he does have an opportunity to throw. Well, he'll use him as that, that halfback or the directional snap? I'm not, I'm not sure with, with Mokan's mouth. You have, a, you you have, have a, a mic. mic. <laughs> you can just you tell have us a mic. what you're thinking. Mike. Mike. For you, for you. The mic was uh, off center with you. Ah, cool. talking. Okay. <laughs> that was you. a te technical direction I from uh, producer Slokan. Um, no, I, 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 I can see that. Um, I still have questions about Terry. Uh, he had to pull himself out of a playoff game. That was the last time we saw him throw before coming into the season. That's why I had some doubts. I still have doubts. Terry, you can't play. You're no good. Just give up the rest of the Yacoub. That's all we have. I have a question for you guys. Uh, PZ, if you were in Terry's position as a Wolfpack quarterback, mm -hmm. would you do better than he did? No. Absolutely. No. Absolutely. 
No. Absolutely. My, my, my only issue was I never had the receivers. Okay. No. You, you say you never <laughs> had the receivers, but you come from a very speed-based system yeah, where course. Terry, all he has to do is put it up, it up and I make know. have a receiver who's I over 6'5", catch I'm, the ball. I'm kidding just because, just because I like to, to, to rag on Terry. Honestly, I, I don't think I would do nearly as well. Terry uh, is a very, very capable player, uh, but I think that... Um, it take, as you move up in divisions, it takes a little bit more than just chucking a ball up. Um, so I think as we move forward, I don't see them winning more than three or, three or four games. Let's call it two. Especially since they play both of us. Yeah, seriously. No, I don't do, do they play us? That's two wins right there for Terry. Sorry? That's two wins for Terry. Two wins for Terry. T for T. FFFT. Um, yeah, so one before that, I put a team, Backyard Bullies, in my power rankings at five. Uh, I got the impression when we spoke, you thought I put them a little high. Uh, are you still the, the, that opinion? Having seen the roster and having seen the play out the first week, seen that they took a loss. A decent amount of it does come down to A, the cap system in Division D, and B, they've, they've got some players who are injured. They've lost some players as well. I think the loss of Steve Sander is going to hurt them volumes. Uh, Steve Sander is one of the, one of the best two-way players in Division Three, mm -hmm. Division Four. So that, that loss is going to speak volumes. However, I don't think it's going to be the end of them. I think they're going to need to regroup. They might find some hidden talent, some hidden gem, just like they did last year to really propel them forward. It's going to be difficult. They're not going to be as dominant as they have been in past seasons, but we don't rule them out just yet. Fair. Um... I'm still on the fence. I still believe. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan. I've always liked backyard bullies, so I'd like to see them do well. Just not when we play against them. But um, I, I honestly, when I, looking at the, the, the rankings, I still think they're a top five team. Uh, I'm hoping the first week was just an, a, an aberration, and we'll, we'll see them back to form in the second week. Um, speaking of first week aberrations. Speaking of first week aberrations, a team that I put at heartbreak. Now, here's the thing. It's not that I think your team – go ahead. No, no, I just, I'm just mimicking your hand motions, and I forgot we're on radio right now. Yeah, exactly. A, a good 60% of our audience can't see what you're doing. Um, of course, the audience being the highest rated audience. <laughs> and by audience, you mean audience. listeners, since we're discussing <laughs> exactly. well, the there's, there's flagship auditory. show of FPF. Call flagship. Yes. The flagship, absolutely. Uh, Slocon finally learning his place. Um, just to shout out the five people that are currently watching live right now, shout out to you it, five. It's one of them my mom, because I would it, believe that. It's very possible. It's very possible. Um, although it is past your bedtime. Um, the thing is, um, I, I did put uh, formerly, formerly, formerly teamless, or I like to call them formerly teamless, currently overrated, um, in the uh, teams that will break your heart category. It's not that I think your team lacks talent. I, it's not your team, I think your team has issues at quarterback. It's just a whole bunch of choking all at once <sighs> with John Brown and... and, and GM, your team's in recent seasons. I know you won the last time there was this much choking. David Carradine was filming himself. Wow, wow, that's impressively awesome and terrible all at once. I just realized uh, what are the uh, name that you call it again? Formerly teamless, currently overrated. That's the one. Do you know there's TCO in that abbreviation? There, there is, there is TCO. F TCO. There we go. Um, what I was going to say with that though is. Is I don't think you're a bad team, but it's it's what I've said about your teams in past seasons. You guys always seem to break my heart. I, I always want nothing but success for you. Yet you always drive me crazy I love, I love and, you. and lose big games. And John Brown, who is quarterback of uh, uh, a team called uh, Lobster Dinner, always seems to lose in big games. Um, and 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 uh, Slocon points out John Brown replaced Jonathan Williams. Is this an upgrade? I think Jonathan Williams, at his best, is probably a better quarterback and has a better physical skill set. But I think John Brown is a more, uh, s more accomplished, not really accomplished, but just a better choice for an FPF quarterback. However, I, I, I just I want to see John win big games. I want to see you win big games. Don't break my heart. That's all I'm saying. Okay. So please tell me I'm wrong. You're wrong. Awesome. That's all I needed from you. Um, GM, final thoughts. Um, Right now, I'm really excited for this division to unfold. I'm really excited to be able to start talking up players, uh, players we haven't really seen in previous seasons, giving them the limelight, seeing... I mentioned that I don't think there's an upper echelon and lower uh, echelon of this division, so I really like the idea that anyone can beat anyone in a week's time. Uh, by the way, uh, Rich Humes, who we all know very well, mm -hmm. uh, when he runs and passes the football, I'm talking about passing 150 yards and rushing over 50 yards, Check out the record. Very impressive. Five and one. There's those Mocon stats that's, we've been that's waiting what we for. Need. That's what we hired a producer who is not the Eagle. 
well done, slow gun. Um, no, absolutely, and 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 uh, thank you for that. Um, is that is that your final thought on today's show? Oh, uh, sorry, Jim, carry on. No, I, I didn't know we were wrapping up yet. I asked you for your final thoughts. No, you we have two minutes left in the show, by the way. All right, so final thoughts, Jim. Yeah. Very excited. Um, it's gonna be a great season. Words. <laughs> words. Uh, wor words are words to live by because they are also, in fact, words themselves. Uh, Mokan, do you have any final thoughts? I do, I do. Uh, I think amongst the five divisions this year, this might be the closest one, the most unpredictable that will go. I think each week we'll see a different team step up to the plate. Could that carry over for multiple weeks? I'm not too sure. Absolutely. And if you've seen uh, Mokan's Tinder messages, it'll be as unpredictable as that. Uh, Eagle, any final thoughts for you? Um, I guess just now that we're actually wrapping up week one of the, the Spring 15 podcast, uh, I'm really digging this spot, actually. I kind of, at first we were kind of a little hesitant of if, whether it was going to be good or not, but I'm really liking, yeah. you know, you have the ambiance of the music in the background. You have a bunch of sweaty guys running around on a, a field in the back, too. We have some ambiance noise. We have Mo Khan. Well, that's not a really good thing, but. Eagle, Eagle's yeah. personal life and sweaty men notwithstanding. Um, I got the pleasure of having the, the tour from Rob Piazza. He showed me all around uh, Sportiera earlier on today. So I got to see the sublimation process, the different FPF uniforms that have been created here, they're really awesome. Like, just even the different materials that you can choose from, I got both my set, and I, I paid for them. I didn't get them comped at all. I'm not saying this because it's a plug. Both sets of my jerseys came from Sportier, and they're absolutely incredible. That being said, I will use it as a segue to, uh, to do my plug. Um, and my going for one, going for two this week, I will be going for two. Um, we have uh, we've had a couple of situations this season already. Teams showing up with pockets. Uh, guys, uh, make sure that you have uh, shorts that don't have pockets. If you do need shorts, you can buy the kit at Sportira. Of course, they do the uh, they are the official FPF supplier of jerseys and shorts. Remember that you need uh, teams should have matching jerseys uh, as the season moves on. We're a little more forgiving early this season as we are. Uh, we we will tighten up the regulations as we as we move on, move forward. If you do need a jersey, do hit up Sportira. Um, and if you, if you have got your jersey, remember to wear them with pride this week as it is picture week. Uh, everyone's favorite, uh, favorite time of year. It's your chance to take a picture with your team. And remember, our site gets 2 million clicks a, clicks a year, so you have a chance for 2 million men to see your picture. Um, I want to thank everyone for listening. Uh, thank you for uh, joining me on this week's podcast. I want to thank Rob Campana. Uh, President Rob Campana for coming Showing by at the end. to make sure he fires me in person after the show. Um, Eagle at Master Control, I want to thank you for all the wonderful work you've done tonight. Call. And uh, we got a live call in from Eagle. Um, Slow Khan, thanks for all the work you've done today. Uh, thanks because I can't read stats, so I, I need you to do that for me. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, stat of the week, PZ's 1-0 in podcasts on the flagship show. Couldn't call agree more. Thanks, Mo, for that, and thank you all for letting me be myself.